watch. You need to, these are notes you're going to need, stuff you're going to know, uh, need to know, and so forth, okay? So uh, last thing we talked about was we were looking at different forms of government based on who could, how many people could participate, okay? So with a dictatorship, obviously you're dealing with a small number of people that get to participate. We talked about different types of dictatorships and characteristics of dictatorships, okay? So when you go from a very few to a very many able to participate, participate we're gonna start talking about democracy. Okay, so when we look at democracy, there's two types of democracy, okay? The first of which is called direct or true democracy. Does anybody remember what uh, some of the founders of this country referred to, to true democracy? Like democracy. Mobocracy. Mobocracy, yes. Uh, they actually feared it quite a bit quite a bit because, guys, it's the majority. So majority rule in a, in a true democracy. So if 51% of people want to do something, they can do it. You know what I mean? In a representative democracy, okay, so to define this, guys, you would write, uh, basically everyone votes on every issue. Everyone has a say on every issue. Everyone votes on everything, okay? Now, and I, and I know you guys are all very well versed on every important subject matter in the United States, right? Mm -hmm. Economics, foreign policy, yes, domestic policy, welfare. You guys are all experts on it. So we should have you vote on everything. Of course. Yes. 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 And probably once you turn 16, too, right? I mean, yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, um, guys. They actually, guys. If you think about this and it's presented in the right way, uh, democracy is true. Democracy is something to really fear. Okay. Our founders did. They did not want it. Okay. So they put in a lot of safeguards against it, like the electoral college. Okay like Congress, okay, um, like checks and balances, all right? So then you have representative democracy, okay, which is a republic, okay? Most countries in the world today are republics. I'm going to send you guys a video. It's 10 minutes. Uh, I showed it to my regular government today because uh, we finished notes and I didn't want to test on, you know, uh, front today. I didn't want to test. So I, I kind of did a Friday extra thing. So um, this is where small group of people are chosen. A small group of people are chosen. By the people to represent their will. A small group of people are chosen by the people to represent their will. These are our people that represent our will. The United States Congress. These are the three people. Okay. Ron Estes, who represents the fourth district of Kansas, which is where we all live. Okay, in Kansas, it's divided up into four. And then two senators, uh, Roger Marshall and Jerry Moran. Okay. Those are our representatives. And then at the at state level, we have state legislatures, both state house and state senators. Most of you don't know who your representatives are. Okay. Uh, we have city councils that represent us. We have county commissioners that represent us. Um, and we are all constituents of Governor Laura Kelly as well. Okay, she represents us. So um, 
We elect these people to represent our will. That is representative democracy or a republic. Okay? Now, let's let's make it confusing. Okay? All right, so we're going to get rid of this direct democracy stuff, okay? When we start talking about republics, we look at two different systems, okay? We have what are called presidential systems. Okay? And don't write this one yet because I got some bullet points here, okay? Parliamentary system, okay? Which you've all heard of, and you probably have an idea where I'm going with this, okay? But there are some important distinctions between these two systems of democratic governments, okay? I use that term democratic carefully, okay? Yes? Use it carefully. Now, uh, in a presidential system, um, generally you have uh, different branches of government that are co-equal. Co-equal branches of government. Yeah, that's one characteristic. And because you have those different branches of government, who's the vice president? What, what, what's her name? Kamala Harris, okay? Now, before she was vice president, she was a what? A senator from what state? California, okay. Guys, in a presidential system, you cannot be a member of the legislative branch and the executive branch at the same time. They are separate and independent of each other, okay? So the, write this down, the executive and the legislature are separate and independent. Separate and independent of each other. This prevents concentration of what? Power. Okay, you always have to keep in mind, guys, when we're talking about our system of government, these people are trying to avoid a government that will become tyrannical, that will dominate our lives. That's what they're trying to avoid, okay? So by dividing these branches, separating their powers, and separating the members that can be in them. Now, Kamala Harris, as vice president, is the president of the what? The Senate. Well, wait a second, Mr. You already said they're separate. Well, the Vice President of the United States has no constitutional duties in the executive branch. She doesn't have any power. She's the Vice President. As John Adams said, the most worthless position ever contrived by man. I am nothing, but I could be everything. Right? George, uh, John Garner, who was the vice president for Franklin Roosevelt, his first vice president, said the vice presidency isn't worth a warm pitcher of spit. He was from Texas. <laughs> okay. Now, it's really up to the president how much the vice president does. They have no constitutional role in the executive. Okay. So you're not, there's no collusion of power here. Okay. Now, so the president, the executive, is independent, and they are chosen not by the legislature. The president is chosen by who? The people through the electoral college in this country, right? So in a presidential system, the president is not elected by parliament or by the legislature. You follow me? Again, keeping them separate. Congress doesn't elect the president. Now, they have twice because there was no majority in the Electoral College. So then it falls on the House of Representatives. We'll learn about that later. Okay. I'll teach you all about the Electoral College. Okay. But anyhow, okay, so the president is elected separately from the legislature, and the president is both chief executive and 
head of state. In other words, our president wears both hats. He wears the chief executive hat, which is, guys, this is the head of the executive branch, runs the day-to-day -day affairs of the country, okay? And head of state, which means he's the leader of our country. He's the ceremonial leader. So, like, if Martians came down from Mars to Kansas and they said, take me to your leader, <laughs> we would take him to the president, okay? When Pope John Paul passed away, Okay, the President of the United States went representing all Americans as the head of state to the funeral. Okay, he's our leader, but he also enforces the law, carries out the law as the chief executive running the day-to-day -day affairs of the country. Okay, in a parliamentary system, these are going to be two different people. Okay, yes, it can get a bit confusing here. So the main differences here, executive and legislature, separate, independent of each other. The president is chosen by somebody other than the legislature because he's not beholden to them. And he is both head of state and chief executive. Okay? So we move to the parliamentary system. And, guys, most republics use this rather than this, than the presidential. Most republics use a parliamentary system which has its advantages and disadvantages, okay? So let's start with, we'll go with Britain, okay? Because most of you are a little bit familiar with the British system, okay? So with Britain, um, in order to become the prime minister, right? In order to be PM, you must be an MP. Not military police. What's an MP? A member of parliament. So guys, in order to become the chief executive, you have to be a member of parliament. Because who elects the prime minister? Parliament does. Okay? So parliament elects elects the prime minister. So they're chosen among, you know, they choose one among them to be the, the leader, the prime minister. So guys, if I were to show you a clip of uh, the House of Commons, you would see the prime minister standing at a table and directly seated across him would be the opposition party leader. So in the case if it was Republicans and Democrats, you'd have Joe Biden standing here, okay, and probably somebody like Mitch McConnell or uh, McCarthy from California as the opposition leader of the Republicans. And they would be able to challenge the President of the United States right there. He would have to debate the other side. In our system, guys, in our presidential system, does the President of the United States ever have to go in front of Congress and debate them or take questions from them? Never. He does not answer to Congress. He answers to the people. Now, one time a year, the president will go in front of Congress during the State of the Union address and give a speech. Do the members of Congress get to debate him there? No. It's all choreographed. It's all Hollywood. Somebody writes the speech for the president. Somebody dresses the they, they have a person. This is what you're going to wear for the State of the Union. This is the color tie. Here's your makeup. Here's your speech. Go give it. Sometimes they'll clap. Sometimes they won't. Otherwise, you just give your speech. It's all Corey. That's the bad part of the presidential system. Okay? Now, we do get some exciting times, like when Nancy Pelosi, if you remember, tore up President Trump's speech while he was finishing his speech during the last day. You remember that? Okay. And there was one time when Obama was given a State of the Union, and Obama made a statement, and one of the Republicans yelled out, you're lying. That was a big deal. Now, let me show you the House of Commons. It's a riot. They literally have a pub 
off the side of the House of Commons where you can go in and drink before you go out onto the floor. <laughs> I'll show you. Okay, now. All right, with this, okay, the, the chief executive in a parliamentary system, okay, is the prime minister. Yes? So, uh, who's the prime minister of Britain right now? Boris Johnson. Okay? How many of you guys know what he looks like? You can picture him in your, in sure. your head like I a girl. Can picture him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the like blonde the hair. hair. It's like yeah. all over the place. Uh, yeah, this guy cracks me up. Now, guys, he's a conservative, but conservatives in Britain are like Democrats in Kansas. You know what I mean? They're not super liberal, but they're liberal. Okay? It's like a Republican in Massachusetts. It's like a Democrat in Kansas. You know what I mean? Same thing with the British PM. That's a conservative, Boris Johnson. I do like the guy, though. He's got some no knocks And that's the thing about the parliament, guys, is you have to be witty. You have to be quick on your feet. You got to be able to defend yourself. You got to be able to give it back. Our presidents don't have to do that. If our presidents don't want to have a press conference, they don't have to have a press conference. Now, if you watch closely, and go watch some press conferences that Trump had. Most of the people in the room, the media, hate him. So they're going to ask him really tough questions, yes? So Trump stopped doing a lot of those. This is how he would do it. He would say, okay, I'm going to go get on Marine One, which is the helicopter. Okay, so he's getting ready to leave somewhere, and there's a bunch of reporters out. And so he'll stop while the helicopter's going. So it's loud in the background, and all the cameras are pointed at him the, the reporters don't get on camera, and he does that on purpose, so they can't get their mug on there. In a press conference, they pan to the person asking the question, and then back to the president. You understand? And so they don't get they don't get their face on TV. So he'll take questions like that with all the noise in the background, and you can't even, a lot of times you can't even hear the question, so you'll just hear him talking. That's how he started doing press briefings. You know what I mean? Uh, when Joe Biden gets a press conference, are they going to ask him tough questions? There's the one guy, the Fox guy, you know, that will, you know, he'll ask the questions. And Biden called him out the first time he held a press conference. He said, oh, yeah, I know you. But at least you got to give Biden credit. He took questions from the guy. You know what I mean? That's all right. Good for him. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, most of these questions, guys, are going to be softball questions. Okay. You know what a softball question is, right? It's slow pitch softball. It's here. Here's an easy question. Knock it out of the park, right? That's the reference. So uh, it is what it is. I mean, you can't do anything about it. Um, it's just a reality, okay? Um, so we'll see how, how this all plays out with the Biden administration. And, you know, I, I hope good things for our country. That's, that's what I hope for. I hope good things for our country. Um, all right, we got to move on. Okay, so um, the prime minister is the chief executive, but the head of state is going to be somebody different. In Britain, who's the head of state? The king or the queen, right? In Japan, who's the head of state? The emperor, okay? Now, let me confuse you. You ready? In some parliamentary systems, the chief executive is called the prime minister. In some, the chief executive is called the premier. In Germany, the chief executive is called what? The chancellor. Chancellor Angela Merkel. Okay? But in Germany, guys, they don't have a king or a queen or an emperor. So who's the head of state? Angela Merkel is, Chancellor Merkel is the chief executive. They have a head of state. It's a parliamentary system. Guess what they call that person, Germany? The president. Not to make it confusing or anything. Same thing in Russia. You have a prime minister and a president. The prime minister runs the day-to-day -day affairs. The president's the head of state. Putin's been both. So, like, when his term's up for prime minister, he becomes president, gets a puppet in there to do what he tells him to do for four years, and then he comes back as prime minister again. Putin's been in power a long time. Okay? That's how he does it. 
right. So polymetric systems are a little bit confusing. All right. Uh, what else do I need to tell you about these systems? So the executive and the legislature are linked, right? Because you got to be an MP to be PM. Yes? Anything else I want to throw in here? Oh, yeah. They do have like presidential or you know term limits for their chief executives, but in these parliamentary systems, guys, they can call for elections at any time. So if the parliament loses confidence in Boris Johnson, they can call for a new election in two weeks. They laugh at us in the United States for how long our election seasons are. I mean, they're long, it's a year. The presidential election season is a year long. Guys, in Europe, at, at most, it's a month. Okay? And it's kind of gotten ridiculous, too, because, I mean, if you go back and see how much money it costs to run for Congress just for, like, a House seat that Estes is in, if you go back to 1984, the average amount it cost to run for um, a House seat was about $500,000. That's how much money you have to raise. Now these these seat these races are going into the tens of millions of dollars in those competitive. You saw the ones in Georgia, guys. I'm talking hundred million dollar election for the Senate. Hundred, they did. It's crazy. It's crazy, guys. So somebody like me, who's a teacher that knows a lot about this crap. I wanted to run for Congress or the Senate. I mean, I have, you know, like 2,000 Facebook friends because a lot of former students <laughs> after 20 years, okay? And if each of you guys gave me $50 with 2,000, what's that going to give me? $100,000? $100,000. When the Senate seat, I'm going to need a lot more than that. Hundred dollars each. Vote right. Vote right. Vote be bright. <laughs> so I got the slogan. We're ready to go. Okay. If Jerry Moran pisses me off enough, <laughs> take a seat. <laughs> now you know in the in the in, in Kansas, for a Republican, the real money's in the primary to win the nomination to run against the Democrat. Because once you get the nomination for the party. That all the Republicans are going to give you money. That's not the hard part. It's the hard part winning the nomination for your party. Democrats, it's like they're looking for volunteers to run. You know what I mean? Like, can we get somebody to run? Because other way, they're going to be unopposed. The Republicans are going to be unopposed. Okay? But there's a lot of competition for those seats, you know, uh, for, on the Republican side and a lot of money. Okay? So, um, I'm sorry, I got off track. Jeez. Okay. Uh, parliamentary system. Uh, so, yeah, a vote of no confidence. And Boris Johnson could say, you know, if they're like being really critical of his COVID response, Boris Johnson could say, okay, I call for new elections. You think you can do it better? Run somebody against me and we'll have an election. So they can call for an election themselves, okay, for, 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 the, uh, for the chief executive spot, okay? So uh, parliamentary systems, okay, presidential systems. I'm going to send you some video, okay? Uh, you guys can watch them if you want. Um, all right, so we're done with different forms of government based on number of people that can participate. Moving on to another way to look at forms of government. Okay, you ready? So this is a new header. And this one is called Economic Hi. Was there a public or third? A republic uh, represents these two different types of systems. The, these two types, republic is a representative democracy. Okay. So you're right under that. You're doing this. Yeah. Okay. Um, economic theories as forms of government. Economic theories as forms of government. And I have five of them. But you better leave some space because I got some long definitions for you. <laughs> Loosen it up. Nobody's here. Nobody's live. 
Okay. Number one. You've all heard of this. Mercantile. Let me spell it for you. M-E-R-C-A-N-T-I-L-I-S-M. It's an ism. Mercantilism. Okay. Now, with this economic theory, there's a finite amount of wealth in the world. A finite amount of wealth in the world. So colonies exist. This is why you colonize, because there's a finite. Colonies exist for the mother country. Buying goods from the mother country, okay, and giving the mother country raw materials. So the colonies exist for the mother country, buying their products and providing raw materials. This is what you studied in world history. What did the Spanish do? What did the English do? What did the Dutch do? What did the French do? What did the Portuguese do? They all went out and colonized. Divided up Americas. Divided up Africa. Tried to divide up Asia. Okay. Now. This system, because it's a finite amount of wealth, you got to go out and find it, okay? And, you know, it works for a while until the people say, you know, we're tired of you abusing us. We're going to revolt, okay? The British went through this numerous times, okay, with us first. Okay? We led the way, all right? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you guys, the Spanish were very good at this, you know, early on. Um, yeah. And, you know, some say the United States, I mean, you could look at possibly, you know, taking over the Philippines uh, after the Spanish-American War, a uh, little bit of American imperialism, a little mercantilism going on there, Puerto Rico, Guam, American Virgin Islands, Samoa, we got a little of that going on, okay? Uh, but we are not a serial offender like some of these Europeans were. Okay. All right. So that's mercantilism. Okay. Uh, the second economic theory is a form of government. And you've all heard of this. Socialism. Socialism. These definitions will get longer as we go along. <laughs> A theory or system of social reform, a theory or system of social reform, which contemplates social reform, which contemplates a complete reconstruction of society, which contemplates a complete reconstruction of society. Comma. With a more just and equitable complete restructuring of society with a complete, excuse me, with a more just and equitable distribution of property and labor. With a more just and equitable distribution of property and labor. Socialism. Now, I don't know over the you know first semester whether you ever made it up here or were able to read this. Political ideologies with cows. Okay, all of these begin with you have two cows. Okay. Socialism. You have two cows. The government takes them and puts them in a barn with everyone else's cows. Okay? So think of your cows as tax dollars. You have money. Government takes your tax dollars, puts it all in the barn with everybody else's tax dollars. 
and then it gives you as much milk as it thinks you need. So think of socialized medicine or Medicare for all, okay? Government taxes everybody, takes that money and gives you as much health care as it thinks you need. That's socialism. That makes sense? It's redistribution of wealth, it's a reconstruction of society, more equitable, because obviously the money you're taking, you're going to take more from the rich, okay, to pay for everybody to have cows. Now, Margaret Thatcher said it, in my opinion, best, when she said the problem with socialism is, eventually, you run out of other people's money. You can tax the rich all you want. But eventually, they're going to run out of money. You guys know who Mar Margaret Thatcher was? She's the former Prime Minister of Great Britain. Right. They called her the Iron Lady. Yeah. Yeah. She's really one of the first women world leaders, um, and a very powerful one uh, during the Cold War. So if you study Thatcher, and she's, I, she's wonderful, I mean, she's cold and heartless at times. <laughs> She's a conservative. Okay. Um, working with Ronald Reagan and people like Pope John Paul II helped bring down communism in Europe and the Soviet Union. Okay. She's, she's rather wonderful. So uh, you're not in history. So if you guys need a history book to read, no, nah, that's English history. You can't read that. Okay. You can read about the relationship between Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher for my history book. All right. Throw the Pope in there if you want to. That's fine. <laughs> All right. So, socialism. Okay. Uh, the third economic theory as form of government. You guessed it. Communism. Ready? This one's a little longer. A scheme. <laughs> A scheme of equalizing the social conditions of life. A scheme of equalizing the social conditions of life, semicolon. Specifically, comma, a scheme which contemplates, a scheme which contemplates the abolition of inequalities, the scheme which contemplates the abolition of inequalities in the possession of property, abolition of inequalities in the possession of property, comma, as by distributing all wealth equally to all. Inequalities in the possession of property as by distributing all wealth equally to all. Come. As by distributing all wealth equally to all. Comma. Or by holding all wealth in common. or by holding all wealth in common for the equal use and advantage of all. For the equal use and advantage of all. Let's start top. A scheme of equalizing the social conditions of life, specifically a scheme which contemplates the abolition of inequalities in the possession of property, as by distributing all wealth equally to all, or by holding all wealth in common for the equal use and advantage of all. Communism. Yeah, wait till we get to bureaucracy. Which by its very nature is long, complicated, and inefficient. <laughs> Communism. You have two cows. Your neighbors help you take care of them, and everyone shares the milk. That's Marxism as it was written, as a theory, 
that everyone would share equally in the possession of property, okay, would be equal in outcome, all right, as well. So everybody gets the same amount of milk. They're not your cows anymore. They're everybody's cows. You understand? And we're all going to share equally, okay? Russian communism. You have two cows. You have to take care of them. And then the government takes all the milk. Bureaucratic socialism is a bureaucracy in a second. Okay. Now, guys, bureaucracy is red tape. Bureaucracy is putting together systems. I don't know if I have time to talk about bureaucracy. Seven minutes? That's going to be a challenge. Okay, because I got some stories. Okay. <laughs> but let me just read this one to you. You have two cops, this bureaucratic socialist. The government takes them and puts them in a barn with everyone else's cop. Remember our tax money? Goes into the barn. Now your cows are cared for by chicken farmers. You have to take care of the chickens the governments took away from the chicken farmers. Okay. doesn't make sense. Like bureaucracy, I'll read this one to you first. Okay? <laughs> you have two cops. The government regulates, oh yeah, regulation. What you can feed them and how often you can milk them. It's government regulation. You gotta follow it. Then it pays you not to feed or milk your cows. You guys remember the New Deal? We're paying farmers not to plant. Right? Now, then it takes both cows, shoots one, milks the other dry, pours the milk down the drain, then it requires you to fill out forms accounting for the missing cow. What the hell is going on? <laughs> That's bureaucracy, okay? Every institution, guys, and in my, I'm not going to do this today, because, uh, and I'll be talking to the class about jobs that they have and so forth. Um, but every organization has some amount of bureaucracy, okay? So, for instance, uh, here at Bishop Carroll, when I first started teaching, okay, there was almost no bureaucracy. I was teaching in the portable. There was no intercom. We filled out our attendance on paper, sent it to the office. We're done with attendance, okay? Grade book, we didn't have the computers, like, all set up yet, so we're keeping a solid grade book. And that's it, okay? That's all the paperwork I got, okay? Now, we've got state assessments that we're doing. We have to be on top of that. Now that I'm a department chair, we have to, all these meetings, okay? So like on Wednesdays, when we're supposed to have time to work, we've got faculty meeting, I got principal's council meeting, and then I got uh, uh, committee meetings because I'm on the wellness committee. I got committee uh, Department meetings with my department. How am I going to get anything done? It's bureaucracy. You know what I mean? It's red tape. So I'll tell a really good story about uh, the one time that Mr. Ebright has been elected to public office. Okay? So I'm going to tell you that story. It's a good one. Uh, in the next lecture, okay? So bureaucracy, you'll be writing the definition off the video, okay? So you can pause it, okay? And then we've got one more, which is capitalism, all right? Which is really sad. Let me just pick on you real quick. How many of you go, you guys all know who's credited with the Communist Manifesto and, and you know, who wrote that, right? Everybody knows who, right? Who? What's his name? Karl Marx. You've all heard of Karl Marx, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now, how many of you guys are familiar with the person's name that is credited with promoting the idea of capitalism? Isn't that weird that we live in a capitalist country? You all know who wrote the Communist Manifesto, but you don't know who is credited with <laughs> writing The Wealth of Nations? The wealth of nations? Not John Adams. 
Not John Long. Is it a John? No, it's an Adam. <laughs> Adam Smith. I know Sorge taught you that. Yeah. I know he taught you that. Because I give him crap when you don't remember. And I'm about to call him in here. Hey, I'm going to keep this story the same. What's that? Yeah. Kind of interrupted. I'm serious. <laughs> All right. So, well, I gave it away to these people, guys, but they'll get to hear the story. I bet they ended it Unless they don't want to.